Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family story of our move to the south of France to a 53-room castle during COVID lockdown with two small children and all of our animals. Now we're here, we will show you some renovation, go on some adventures, and in addition to that, we'll also try and pick up some French culture in this beautiful region and also have a lot of fun with our volunteers. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Chateau Dreams. Wherever you are, I hope you've had a fantastic week. Gosh, what awful news this week on the death of Queen Elizabeth II. Just tragic. I think I, like many other people, just expected that she'd go on forever. So yes, very sad day. I don't know about you or how you feel, but certainly for me, the Queen was always the most phenomenal role model. To see a woman who was strong and in such a leadership position for such a long time and was kind and had a real sense of duty and a real sense of family um, has been something of an inspiration to me. So I never knew her, but um, wow. Thank you very much, Your Majesty, um, for everything that um, you enabled me to feel I could do in my life. And you know, to King Charles III, very best of luck. I'm sure you'll do brilliantly. And when asked about preparation for life as a royal, Prince Charles said, you pick it up as you go along. You watch and learn. I learn the way a monkey learns, by watching its parents. So, King Charles III, with parents like these, you are sure to do incredibly well. Thank you, sir. I thought what we would do is go back in time and look at the actual property details of this particular castle. I thought it'd be quite fun. You can have a look at those, have a look at the couple of videos that Ross sent me when he came here, and then maybe you can make your own decision as to whether or not you would have gone for it and bought this castle, or whether you would have waited for another one. Before that, I'm going to show you the, uh, a couple of the other castles that we went to go and look at as well, so you can see those. It was a very interesting time, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think in the comments. Buying a chateau is great, great fun, but you really must decide, because there's a myriad of options out there, what is most important to you. No two are alike, and they all have their joys and their quirks, and unless you have a an unlimited budget, you have to make some choices. For us, we absolutely had to have stables, land for the horses, a chateau of any size, and we wanted it to be warm so we needed to be in the south of France. Because of the children we really didn't fancy a massive renovation project. So I'm only going to show you our very near misses. And I'm really interested to hear if any of these you would have liked to have called home. First up, the glorious Chateau d'Escurat in Le Dorat. This place is absolutely gorgeous. Offered by the wonderful Cendrillon Immobilier agent, the, the castle, I believe, had nine bedrooms in the main castle, an additional cottage, three stables, and a stable block to be renovated. Also, a fabulous lake, which was stocked with fish, and the most glorious interior decoration. This castle had the most fascinating backstory. It was an inheritance for two boys who didn't even realise they owned it until they came of age. On discovering it, it was actually a castle, they literally opened the key for the first time and walked in. Inside, it was very much turnkey. The builders had clearly finished it and just shut the castle up. Outside, the gardens and outbuildings needed work. Sadly, in the end, this one wasn't for us. Uh, we had effectively sold our property to somebody, um, but we found the castle very quickly, and unfortunately, we were too fast in finding somewhere for their financing to come in place. However, as you can see, it's now running as the most marvellous boutique hotel and they have their own Facebook page if you want to check it out some more. For this particular castle, we were under a lot of time pressure. We had lost out to the last place we were meant to be moving to and I'll show you some pictures of that. Like many people who were buying property, we were in a chain and very sadly, our buyer wasn't able to exchange in time for us to be able to purchase that property. And here is that chateau, Chateau La Blustière. 
It had wisteria all over the balcony here, an observatory, a glass house which actually contained a heated swimming pool with a mural at one end. 27 hectares, this property was fully furnished and everything, absolutely everything worked. It only needed a new boiler. The backstory with this chateau was that it was actually owned by an American owner who'd owned it for very, very many years and only used the castle in the summer. It was kept maintained while they weren't there and um, it, was, it was just a wonderful place. I'm sorry there are no additional photos of this castle. I was so upset when we didn't get it, I actually deleted them all. We then had two choices of different properties to look at. The one that we bought and the other property. Well, we were under a huge amount of time pressure because with Brexit coming and looming over us, if we didn't get into France and we're living in France by a certain date, we simply wouldn't be able to. And so it was really a choice of staying in the UK in the house that we then had, or if we wanted to make the move to France, to just go for it and try and find an appropriate property. All's well that ends well in life. And we were very lucky and we found here. And as you can see, all is fine. It was, however, quite a stressful time, particularly moving 10 horses, because if the dates didn't align quickly, the horses would be homeless, which would be quite tricky, particularly with the dates of bringing them over here to France. As you know, very lucky in that my parents um, allowed us to come and stay with them in their house. So the whole family went there and the horses in the six week intervening period were scattered amongst friends of ours. So thank you to everyone. With our specific criteria, there were only two chateaus in the whole of the south of France that fit the bill and were on budget. This particular chateau was one of them. With 1,280 square metres of living space, it had stables, a guardian's house, garages, um, in addition an orangery and a heated greenhouse. How marvellous! With six hectares of prairie, it was really on the baseline of what was needed for our horses. It had been remodelled by Violet Le Duc in the neo-Gothic style, and I started to get excited. The castle was offered by the wonderful Lanai estate agency, who specialise in chateaus. The two wings forming one building basically consisted of one restored part of the castle and one unrestored and yet to do. I'd had a few conversations with Gonzague Lanai about this particular castle, and in the end it was his opinion that there was too much work that needed to be done that we would wish to do. So we put that one on hold and looked at the only other castle left that we'd previously discounted because it didn't appear to have enough land. It had been one of the very first we'd got the details on. We didn't realise that the plus cell C on the left-hand side land was actually involved and that made all the difference as it's a 10-acre flat meadow, just perfect. This was February 2020, Covid was in full force and we were starting to get really worried. I never saw this castle, this chateau, before the first day that we arrived and neither had the children. The only people who had made it here were Craig, Ross's, one of Ross's best friends, and also Ross himself. I sent him on ahead to look because one of us needed to stay at home. I will show you the videos that he sent me back and I'll also show you the original house details so you can see on what I had to make my decision and our decision when he came home. It was a very exciting time and I had absolutely no idea for reasons I'll explain later, how large this chateau was. So here are the chateau sales details. It was up for sale with French character homes who were utterly charming. As you can see, it has a guardian's house with 260 metres squared with four bedrooms, and it says that it's got 581 metres squared of living space in the castle. So you therefore think, great, it's about an eight bedroom or so house. It also says it's basically renovated in most parts, which is awesome. With 12 hectares plus the stables, uh, it needed a bit of a scrub, clearly, but I started to get very excited, and so did Ross. It's also an hour from the beach and an hour from the mountains. Just perfect in the warmest part of France. We were very worried we were going to lose our buyer. They'd actually sent us an email to ask us to hurry up, even though they hadn't been ready beforehand. So we were very worried about what we were going to do and spent a few days literally finding these two castles. In the case of this one, revisiting it, and literally it was a case that if it wasn't one of these two, that was our French dream gone. No, having a lovely warm panorama with a coffee in our local village. Nightmare! 
We decided on the Sunday that if it was going to be one of the two, it was going to be this one. It was far more suitable for us as a family. And I gathered as many pictures as I could find, as you can see, from the internet, from the sales details everywhere, in order to help us make our decisions. Eddie, the estate agent, actually also been over and taken some photos of the fields, which you can see here. He'd done this the year before when we were initially looking at the chateau and didn't realise the other field was involved. And we... His comment was, it's a great space. If you've got a good bushwhacker, you can clear it all out. It'll be marvellous. Here's the picture of the four-bedroom guardian's house. So that was Sunday. It was literally our last chance. We rang on Monday morning and Eddie told us that the chateau was actually sold. Oh man, short of driving around random villages in France looking for chateaus that have been closed up and then asking locally who owned them, particularly with the time constraints, what on earth are we to do? Ross and I shot out for breakfast to try and cheer ourselves up. I must confess I did shed a tear or two and then we girded our loins and thought, well, maybe Eddie knows of something else that's for sale. And disappointed though we were, time was of the essence, so we gave him a call back. Very bizarrely, the other agent had called him to say that the sale had fallen through after the deposit was paid, which is 10%, so that's really quite serious. But most importantly, the property was going back on the market. Ross and I agreed immediately that he should zip on the fastest plane and get over there. So he was here within three days with Craig, who dropped everything to come, which was incredibly kind of him. So, armed with the sheets I've already showed you and the information from the agent, we subsequently discovered the place hadn't really been lived in for five or six years. Ross was here. He stayed here for about an hour and a half, because that's all that time would allow. And he promised to take a couple of videos for me so I could see the layout at least of the downstairs. And here they are. Start here. Cool. Stay upstairs. And to the left here is your separate little dining room. And that then takes you around into the dining room, which was straight out from the hall. Meanwhile, back at home, Arthur, Scarlett and I, who'd already started packing for the other place, were wondering how Daddy was getting on at this potential new castle. In the hour and a half that Ross and Craig were able to spend there, they said that it had, seemed like it had enormous potential. It was hugely overgrown and it was enormous that only seemed part of it and there was obviously huge potential. Eddie then explained to us the difference between renovated space and non-renovated space. And everything referred to in the details referred to renovated and not the rest. 
So now you've got all the information I had, so what would you do? Would you move to this castle or would you stay in the UK with little chance of getting to France? Do let me know in the comments, I'm fascinated. Ross and Craig were back the next morning. We made an offer, uh, which was immediately accepted, and hooray, we were off to France. And of course, what we couldn't possibly know at that time was all the fun we were going to have with our fantastic volunteers who come and stay, um, with all the beautiful places that you can go and visit, and our fabulous new French friends. It's just brilliant.